Ferrari is the latest film from veteran filmmaker Michael Mann, the director of Thief, The Insider, Last of the Mohicans, Heat and Collateral. Mann has been one of my favourite filmmakers for a long time. In my video on the main channel on my top 10 favourite film directors, he has his place at 7th firmly secure. However, I fully recognise his best films were more than 20 years ago and his output in the 21st century leaves a lot to be desired. Coincidentally, when he started tinkering around with his HD digital cameras and switched up his visual style. The title of this video says it's his best movie in years and the thumbnail suggests that isn't anything to scream about. I think that more or less sums it up. It's a solid 6 out of 10 and a film you forget exists after you've seen it. When I think of Miami Vice, Public Enemies and Black Hat, the last of which I can hardly remember anything about, if I was forced to re-watch any of them I'd probably pick Ferrari. But a key word there is forced because really I don't have an interest in seeing any of these films again. Ferrari is okay I thought, it's a solid biopic, pretty standard. Not really the kind of film you'd go out of your way to see at the cinema like I did, more like one you'd come across when you're flicking through the channels on TV and say, oh look darling, it says this one here is directed by the guy who made Heat. It's nowhere near as good as say Ford vs Ferrari. Man often makes masculine movies focused on certain types of men who pursue excellence at all costs, putting their craft and trade above all else, above their women, their safety and sometimes even their lives. Ferrari definitely fits that bill, you can see why a man like Mann would be attracted to this type of material. It tells the tale of entrepreneur Enzo Ferrari, in particular the summer of 1957 when Enzo's empire is in crisis and him and his team preparing for the Mille Miglia, a 1000 mile race across Italy where Ferrari really needs to win to ensure its survival. Most of the film is geared around this and other elements of Enzo's life are sprinkled into it like his turbulent relationship with his wife, his time spent with his mistress and son and a few bits and pieces from his past. It's a refreshingly old school way to do a biopic, I think a lot of films set themselves up to fail these days when they try to tell the entire life story of someone significant. Ferrari isn't interested much in Enzo's career as a racer or him building the Ferrari empire, it just has a few key focuses. Oh that others might learn. It's worth mentioning that I have no interest in car racing nor any knowledge of Ferrari's story, so if there's huge blunders the film made with the real life history I can't really comment and much of my interest in the story while I was watching it and as it went on was predicated on the fact that I didn't know where it was going and the climax was definitely a surprise. Adam Driver plays Enzo Ferrari. I'm sure there's a clever racing pun there somewhere which other reviewers will no doubt utilise and just like the film itself, I thought Driver was serviceable. Enzo is depicted as razor focused on his gold, people around him are tools for him, even his wife. He has but one goal and that goal is to win at all costs and that's the mentality he wants to instil in his drivers. Even still the man is witty and has a dry sense of humour. Driver does a good job but I felt his performance lacked that twinkle in the eye, that authentic Italian larger than life, hey I'm not a very nice guy but you can't help but love me kind of feeling. His was a mechanical performance and it wasn't helped by the fact that he doesn't really look as old as he's supposed to be in the film. Sure the hair is greyed and there's a few wrinkles but it looked and felt like a 30 year old playing a 50 60 something, it was like the opposite of the Irishman's problem where the guys were all old and supposed to be playing young men. Penelope Cruz, who has 9 years on Driver, looked a lot older than him and when they get jiggy with it in one scene it just felt weird, like someone doing it with their aunt. I can't help but wonder if another actor who had given a powerhouse performance could have taken the average material by its throat and made a great film of it. Driver was not that man. Cruz was great by the way, when I looked at her face I saw a wife who'd been living a pained relationship with her husband, I saw a mother who lost her child and it crushed her. When I looked at Driver, as good as he was, I saw a man playing Enzo Ferrari in a motion picture. In terms of visuals, you'll be pleased to know Man has more or less ditched his weird 21st century aesthetic for Ferrari. For the most part, it looks normal, if you know what I mean. 
In the beginning, I was starting to think, oh, here we go again, as we had an out-of-focus close-up of a woman's blurry hair. But it seems man blew his load with that style in the first five minutes or so, and the rest of the movie, for the most part, looks pretty solid. The climatic race in the final 15 minutes was fun to watch. The engines roaring sounded great in the cinema. It was all very engaging, aside from one unacceptably ridiculous instance of a CGI flying car, which you can't actually see in the film's trailer. It's crazy how bad it is when there's another crash scene, which was enthralling and a superb scene. I think Ferrari is a pretty smart film. There's one part, for example, a bit of visual filmmaking, where Enzo and a young woman are looking at a driver going around the track, and he ponders to himself after hearing her name. He tells her he knew her mother, and the camera lingers, it stays on him, then it focuses on her, and there's a bit of a weird vibe. With it already having been established that he sleeps around, I think the movie wants to put it in your head, without saying, that he may have slept with her mother. And then wants you to think, wait, could he actually be her father? But then the movie will go and do something a bit weird, like a miscast Shailene Woodley, and an out-of-the-blue sex scene between a random driver and his girlfriend. There's also scenes that are strangely put together. Like, there's one part where a guy is going around the track. In fact, it's actually the same scene I was just talking about. Someone looking for a job as a driver approaches Enzo, and he says he doesn't need more drivers. The guy on the track immediately crashes and presumably dies, and then Enzo says something like, come to my office on Monday while he's watching the crash unfold and the havoc hasn't even finished yet. I think they were going for an epic moment where Enzo knows that the man will have already died. He knows these things, that's how good he is. And he's so ruthless, he's already thinking about his next racer. But the timing and execution came off as comedic. I also noticed the musical cues that started and ended mid-scenes were not well done at all. They were pretty jarring. The real issue with this film is quite simply that it's just a bit boring. There's a large chunk of the film, maybe from around 15 minutes in until around the halfway mark, where the movie is just rather dull and dry, not holding your attention and making you wonder whether this should have been a one hour Netflix special or something. One could argue the script could have been more juicy to give the film flavour. Others might say man's directing is tired and lacks thrilling action and that's what the problem was. But all in all, what you're left with is a movie that is just alright. If anything, it made me want to do more research on the 1957 crash after I finished the film. I kind of wanted the film to go on a bit more, to show us more of the fallout from the events in the film's climax. If The Insider is an example of man taking a story that sounds dreadfully boring and making a superb film from it that everyone can enjoy, Ferrari is an example of a pretty interesting story and making a bit of a boring film from it that probably those who have a real interest in Ferrari and racing will enjoy. An okay film, nothing more.